Greetings everyone. So today we are going to see on how did the British industry change with the new technology. So we are going to go even deeper. This is your second subtopic from the topic how did British industry change with new technology. Uh, previously you learned on what type of technology was introduced. Alright, so for this subtopic, you will learn how did the new technology actually impact the people's life. Definitely in whatever inventions that come through in our life, there will be a pros and cons, right? Like, like even for handphones. Uh, if you look at handphones, when it newly was invented and introduced in the uh, world, it brought many advantages as well as disadvantages like people uh, tend to stick on it like a glue uh, they don't want to socialize they only depend on people who are actually virtually uh, connected or communicated through the handphone so things like that and when it comes to machines like this machines like this also brings uh, negative okay the cons the pros and the cons okay negative and, and uh, positive views as you can see like uh, imagine a laptop okay imagine a laptop you're having a laptop in your hand one of the pros that your life becomes easier like for instance even making this video okay it is easy to make a video that come into zoom or come to um, online classroom or even come to literally one-to-one -one, face to face classrooms right so all you have to do is just record uh, add in a few notes add in a few assignments add in a few homeworks and then you're done so this is what you call pros what about the cons okay cons like as a teacher for me the cons is that i'm not aware or i do not know i do not i'm not sure enough that you are actually taking down the notes that is one cons the second con is that cons is that I do not know whether you truly understand what I'm trying to say. So that, that is the second cons, right? Okay, so let's move on to the reaction. What happened during the British during the nineteenth century when all these types of machine came into the industry? As we all know, uh, we have the wool industry, right? Okay, which you learned last uh, subtopic. So we're going to see here how did people actually react now all right so in this slide you will be looking at the reaction that means how is their feelings towards this new technology people not uh, not people like the king and the queen not like the parliament not like uh, the government now we are talking about people who are actually working a day-to-day basis okay day to day daily job basis it can be people who are laborers okay it can't be you okay because you are still a student okay you don't work daily basis we have parents okay even um, some of our parents they work daily basis like since this mco is taking place right during the covid 19 some of our parents are actually losing jobs right some of them Okay, they're losing jobs because they are actually day-to-day -day basis. Like, for instance, let's take a person who is very common in our school, Aka, right? The maid in our school. Okay, for her, this is a day-to-day -day basis of work. She doesn't get a monthly uh, salary, okay? She doesn't, she can't work from home like how I do, like all the other teachers do. She can't work from home because her work is mostly labor. She cleans, okay? Literally, she can't look at a computer and just say, oh, okay, you clean this, you clean that, right? So, these are daily basis. Only if Kaka goes to work, she gets a salary. If she doesn't go to work, like during this time of period, she can't go out, right? Because even we can't go out. We are afraid that we'll get infected. The second thing is because of the government is restricting us okay so th things like this will make kaka not to go work and she will not have a salary she will not have wages so how is she going to survive so this is what happened during that century okay they brought in machines okay they brought in machines to 
and eventually what happened when they brought in machines is that they started to lose their jobs. Yes, machines actually help. Very true. Machines really help people and in the industry to prosper, to gain profit, to make things really, really quick. But at the same time, okay, but at the same time, it actually reduces the number of laborers, the number of people who is working there. People depend on those kind of jobs during that time. Not everyone is educated here, yeah? even not now. Even now, not everyone is educated. They depend on day-to-day -day basis of work. Okay, so they tend to lose jobs in Britain. Many people are losing a lot of jobs, even women here, yeah? because women are also working in the cotton industry. Men are working in the coal industry. Okay, the charcoal, okay, that's what I mean, coal. So when they tend to lose their jobs, they don't have money. How are they going to raise their kids? How are they going to maintain the food flow at home, how are they going to pay debts? Not everyone is out of debts, and most of them are with debts there. So as you can see here, that with the arrival of the inventions, many people began losing jobs, as industries fully depend on machine. People were only needed to monitor the machine. So as you can see, if I uh, during those days we don't have photocopy machine, you know the photostat machine that you see in Marcelli's room, okay? We don't have that during those days. We only start to write. We appoint people to copy down. Okay, so people literally had jobs those days before even this photocopy machine arrived. So now, when this machine arrived, there's no one there to work anymore. There's no one there to copy all this anymore. So they lose jobs. Machines take over. So the, if you look at the second point, great number of people begin to lose jobs in Britain. So I wanted you to take down all these notes here. Okay, for this slide, please take down these notes. All right, so what are the implications? So implication is what are the effects? Okay, what happened during that time? When people start losing jobs, what happened to them? So the first one you can see is no support. And if you can see a smaller point there, no benefits. Yes. So like I said before, when you don't have a job, can you literally support your family? Imagine your dad or your mom losing jobs. Can you literally sit in EC Homeschool and study? Because EC Homeschool is private, right? You dump money to study there. None other like government school, okay? People can't, most of them can't afford to send them to international or to private schools. So imagine if your mom and dad loses a job, okay? Can they literally send you to a private school? No, the answer will be no, right? Either they would stop you to go go for school, or they change school, or even make you to wait like one or two years and then rejoin again. So these are what you call support. There are no supports for kids. It's education definitely, and even food. Okay, for elders, people who are living in, okay, like your grandpa, your grandma. Your parents are not able to support them. And what happens to them when they can't support them? They end up going into old folks' home. Yeah. Because they can't support them. They don't have much money. Okay. Parents, they are feeling it difficult to support them. So what happens to your grandparents is that they eventually end up in the homes. Right. Okay. So if you look at the second one, it's little chances of, chances of finding jobs. Here what it means that a transition of jobs were difficult at that point, meaning if you lose one job, it is so difficult to get another job. Even it happens now, right? Even at, even at all, if I leave my teaching job and I want to go for another job, it is so difficult, it is super hard, right? So that's why even now, uh, since you guys are not working yet, but in the working life, we always have a say that have another job in hand before you lose the current one. Because if you lose the current one, like for example, I'm a teacher now and eventually I don't like this job, I want to leave this job, so I just leave it one fine day. But I don't have another job in hand. So that will be my testing period. That will be so crucial in my life to find another job. So that is what is happening there during that time. It's so difficult to lose a job. Suddenly you see tomorrow you're, you're unpaid or you, uh, your boss calls you, okay, you're, you lost a job, don't come for work. What happens to you? Finding another job is super hard during those days. Okay, 
So when all these things are happening, these people, these laborers, these people who are losing jobs, they're losing money, okay, they, they have to pay debts, they tend to get angry. Okay, they are angry, they are unhappy, they are not at peace. They, so they eventually they did something. What is it something that they did is riots. Like how I always say, uh, how he has riots, right? Uh, demonstration okay so this demonstration is a little bit peaceful type but riots here means a little bit of violence okay what happens in the riots is that uh, there are many things destroyed sometimes even people are murdered okay right so these riots are done to spark or to express unhappiness so because they are poor okay these laborers are poor they can't get enough attention or they can't get a pathway to actually express how they feel so this is how they do it they do riots okay who did all these riots so the people who are laborers who are working in the factories who lost their jobs who can't actually pay their debts okay so these are the types of people who actually started the riot Okay. They wanted to do something to make sure the government knows what you have done. What have when you brought in machines? Look what happened to us. We lost our jobs. How are we going to support our family? So, this attention is what they wanted to. They wanted people or the government or the parliament to look at them. Okay, so who were the people who lost their jobs during that time? A hand look bearers. Okay, and wool combus. So these are the two types of people who are actually leading laborers at that moment. If you look at the pictures there, figure one and figure two, those are hand looms, and figure two is the wool combus. So these are the two most common labor work. Okay, during at that time, during for the cotton industry. As you can see, if you can, uh, if you have time, browse around. Okay, browse around the internet. And you will be able to see how they are actually making all these hand looms and the wool combers. Okay, so uh, they do still practice in Malaysia, like small term industries, like small term industries. Like they have uh, one or two workers. They they are still in, they are still doing this in Malaysia. It is not uh, to preserve the culture or anything. It's just to give. A daily basis work to people who can't actually go for work like uh, we know we have uh, people who are crippled people who are special you know the special children special kids okay so when they grow up they don't they can't actually work like you and I in an, in an office even in a, on a shopping mall and all that so they need something to support their life so this is how they actually support themselves being wool combers, handloom weavers, okay, so these jobs still exist now to accommodate special people, okay, and also uneducated people, they are people who don't have education, they can't find work like you and I, uh, we can't, we can't actually, uh, they can't actually fit into our type of work, working life, so they need jobs like this, which we still have in Malaysia. Alright, so if you look at the next picture, that is the riot in front of the factory. This is an actual picture take, taken during the 19th century. It's actually a drawing here. So someone actually drew that scene. So if you can see, they're holding pistols. Some of them are holding pistols. One, one guy's hand is broken. So all this happened during the riot and they're standing in front of the factory. Okay, they're expressing their emotions. They're expressing their, un expression, expressing their unhappiness. Alright, they are smashing the new machineries. Alright, as you can see, we we can't see the inner part, but this is the outer part of the factory where people are standing and rioting. So, in every riot or in every group, they also have a leader. Always, there's always a leader. So, this leader is called a net lut. Okay, eventually they picked up a leader. They made themselves leaders. Okay, they don't choose uh, anyone they didn't chose anyone who is like great and all that they, did, they just chose a person who is among themselves and that person they call him net lad okay so their group is called ludits okay it's called ludits like how you're called students i'm called teachers 
all right so they are called the ludits because they are rioting or they are fighting for the uh, rights of the laborers so if you can see here when they were doing all these riots the government wanted to find uh, an excuse okay the government wanted to find an excuse that was unreliable unrelatable with the laborers so what did the government say is that oh because you want to overthrow the ruling level that means because you don't like the upper class you're trying to make a riot ah. they don't actually uh, see the importance or what is the implication what are the cons that laborers are going through when they lose their jobs but the government actually um, how do you say he they lied or they just came up with a stupid excuse saying that all oh, the lower class doesn't like the upper class ruling all right so this will be your assignment okay so this assignment you have to follow the format letter as i've mentioned in that small box white box right you will write your letter on an a4 or lined paper and your letter should be within 80 to 100 words only make sure it is 80 to 100 words and you're going to submit this 10 a.m okay so before 10 a.m or on dot 10 a.m you will send me this via whatsapp so this will be your attendance if you do not submit this and if you do not submit properly you will not get your attendance for the day all right okay so what are you going to do so you're going to write a letter under the name of Ned Ludd. So this Ned Ludd, as I've already told you, he's the leader for the laborers group. So you're actually writing to a local factory owner. It can be cotton, it can be wool, it can be corn, okay? It can be even papaya, okay? A factory owner. Using all the sources in this lesson, in your letter you must state why handloom weavers and wool combers are not happy. So, so if you look here, I've narrowed down the letter to wool industry here, yeah? okay, wool industry. So you are going to write as net lud, okay, you're going to write to a local factory owner why the people who were actually working in your industry is not happy right now, okay. Why are they not happy? The second one, why are you not paying, okay, net lud is asking the factory owner why have you stopped paying your people okay what happened so you're asking then you state a reason for the riot so since you stopped paying them because the machines came in we are going to actually start a riot and this is the reason because my laborers or my people or my kind of people are unhappy they don't have money to support your family so we are actually going to start a riot so you are actually um how do you say you are actually challenging the factory owner here okay you have to write as if you are challenging your factory owner to make your factory owner realize the mistake that you were doing okay the mistake is that you did not pay your people you told them not to come for work okay and since they don't have work they are actually suffering so you are going to make the factory owner realize that so that will be your letter so you look at the format of the letter the white box there you're just going to write two and sir whatever name that you want to give make sure it's um, english name because this is in the 19th century so you can just pick out any names from the book right so to sir like um, last two weeks you learned about andrew jackson so you can write there sir andrew jackson who is the owner of a factory right so i Ned lot so Ned lot you can't change the name Ned lot remain it because he is the leader of the group so i Ned lot leader of the helpers laborers is pointing to you that so state all the reasons the three points that i've told you just now and then you sign off by saying yours truly Ned lot so that's all thank you